How you doing, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Midnight Hatter Live, the weekly variety show where we talk Gundam gaming and uh, other good stuff. Now, this is not a very special episode like one of those 80s PSAs. We're not going to talk about steroids or, you know, you wouldn't steal a car, anything like that. No, no. This is a celebration episode. I'm very excited today because, hey, thanks to you guys, we made it to 4,000 subscribers. So thank you. That's awesome. You guys are the most important part of this channel. I'm, of course, your host, Stephen, a.k.a. Midnight Hatter, and joining me, as always, is the well-dressed Adam Blue. Nice shirt, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. This is one of the better shirts I own. Like, literally, like, the, the size just fits me, no matter how big or small my gut gets within a <laughs> month period. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I when I started buying them, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the winter fit. We'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> to to accommodate for all the holiday foods that uh, that's that's pretty good it's pretty good the winter fit <laughs> yeah um so yeah hope you all are doing good hope you're having a good week it's been pretty hectic around here but um you know there's a lot of fun p bandai news to talk about and i'm i can't wait to get into it because i know how excited and uh, how much you guys love p bandai and <laughs> <laughs> As always, I'm going to continue to uh, be the unpaid shill for P Bandai, but we'll get into that shortly. I don't want to bury the lead here because today, like I said, we are celebrating 4,000 subscribers. And so with that in mind, if you uh, click the link down in the description below on YouTube or let me hit the chat here, I'm going to post the link in chat. You can enter to win this guy right here which i think is a very emblematic of my channel right because it's it's, it's half zeta gundam it's right. half uh bawu it is the re100 gundam lindworm so it's it's like the zeta and the bawu had a baby it hasn't hasn't even been opened yet i've still got the little plastic wow. tapes on it do but, you uh, happen to have one of your own that you built? i don't wow so yeah this is this one's just for you guys i so feel between... like you should get one for yourself too and do like a midnight hatter custom now that would be the way to go for sure especially because coming with this is going to be a cut a custom set of decals designed by yours truly that oh, um, cool. i'm going to print out and cut on the old cricket so it'll be a, it'll be a fun little giveaway like i said you can enter Fair below enough. um i see that uh yeah, I see everyone's excited here in the chat. Rogue new type, the G line is so good. That's the other thing we're going to talk about today. Is this guy came in the mail the other day? So we're gonna maybe do a little unboxing, take a look at the runner situation. There's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to build it in an hour. You guys know that I'm <laughs> no no good at that. Um, we've got Shirt Lad in the chat, of course. We've got Ultronimus. We've got uh, Zionic Shadow. Thank you, Zionic Shadow, because we're actually going to be using some of your uh handiwork here um to to show off some of these uh p bandai drops that are coming out uh gundam wing king dylan good to see you guys yeah thank you so much for tuning in we're gonna have a fun little show here oh yeah always yeah oh and what's that you got drinking is that a ghost yeah ghost energy um those I, things are I, good I, uh, yeah, I'm I'm a fan. This is the uh, strawberry mango margarita, which really just tastes like a Slurpee. So, oh, they don't have that around here. They have the, I think it's like a sour patch watermelon or something like that. I love the candy flavors, yeah. you know that sort of thing. I think C4 Energy does the same thing. I'm sure that my heart's going to explode at some point, but you know, I do this in order to keep keep the energy level high yeah. for when we're <laughs> doing the oh, show. Oh yeah, hey, I did that. Uh, yeah, with the coffee. There so, you go. I'm all. Yeah. So yeah, let's go ahead and hop straight into uh, some of this P Bandai news because, like I said, I I'm I'm a huge fan of P Bandai. Uh, um, Adam, tell tell me your experience with P Bandai. Like, you know, you and I kind of have the same idea that we're like, at least this is a way for us to get kits that we would not normally see, right? Exactly. There's multiple reasons this is good because, like, Bandai can announce a couple, like a wave, and be like, hey, it's going to be up for pre order. And then they'll that way they can also gauge because, you know, they're able to do this in house. They can gauge popularity and know if they need to re-release the kit uh, because of that. And I've even even though I'm more of a more recent Gundam con uh, convert convert mm -hmm. yeah, compared to most, I have realized that eventually P Bandai will have a kit that I've been looking for. And I've even messed up where I like spent 70 on Toad's Ritter and then it was like, what, 25 <laughs> on P yeah. Bandai. A couple of months later. So. I think the Toast Ritter is scheduled to come out again on P Bandai. That's one of those ones that's kind of on oh, a cycle that's... that they keep re-releasing it. Um, 
So yeah, on that note, um, the high grade one forty fourth scale Gundam Mudrock is going to be dropping later today. Uh, I guess at 9 p.m. Eastern. So this is another re-release. I love, I, I don't have this kit, but it's one that uh, I'm a fan of because obviously I love the Xeonic Front video games. And um, this is one of those kits that has like the optional build parts, right? You can either build the full version Gundam Mudrock with these skirts, or you can build the half Gundam Mudrock that you encounter earlier in the game. So, so and you said this is in the Xeonic Front game? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the enemy that that you oh, fight. Yeah, okay. as as the mid midnight Fenrir squad. Um, what? Uh, how far in the game does it appear? I believe it's uh, probably like the seventh or eighth mission, somewhere around there. Because I know mission six is when you do your recon mission on the white base, and you have to gather information about the RX seventy eight, the gun cannon, the gun tank, and then there's a pilot that you uh, encounter, Lieutenant Auger he starts off in a gun cannon and the first time you beat him you know he gets upset angry and all this stuff so he comes after you again in the gundam mud rock but it's this wow. incomplete model you know it's basically just an rx-78 with some cannons strapped on the shoulders but then by the end of the game he gets his mid-season upgrade to the full mud rock which has like the the hover skirts and kind of looks like it's got like a little gundam oh. alex vibe yeah. to it I yeah. like that a lot. Like I haven't dove much into the mud rock, so maybe I need to just play Zionic Front, uh, kind of see what it's like. Because honestly, that first level of Zionic Front was enough to be like, okay, this game's hard. <laughs> it, it is a very hard game, <laughs> and, and I miss those types of games. Like because yeah. you know I always describe it as like it's just Rainbow Six with Gundams. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh and and i loved the old rainbow six games particularly yeah. the ones on n64 for some reason like that was the that that game resonated oh, with wow. me wow really. yeah that's funny because the vegas was what i was always remembering but you unlocked a memory yeah <laughs> cool so memory it must have really started with n64 i'm gonna have to go because as soon as you said it i pictured the box art because it's like the green uh shaded or something yeah okay yeah exactly that that seems to be like the the rainbow six color which i think is a lot of people kind of confused rainbow six and siphon filter because they both had oh, that same sort yeah. of like font and stuff both fantastic games like yeah. i loved the original siphon filter i never played any of the sequels but yeah tactical um, action is popular yeah it, or is is usually <laughs> what, what did you say action action <laughs> i like that but no it, it, that seems to be popular in general so you know. it is yeah uh, there was a oh man i can remember it like it was yesterday the there's that mission in rainbow six where you have to break into this house in the middle of the woods and it's basically like you know you've got the I, I guess like terrorists or whatever kind of uh, operatives insurgents, whatever are hiding out in this house in the woods and you're kind of scripting out like okay i want like strike team alpha to go around the back of the house strike team bravo is going to come around here i'm gonna you know burst in the front and it's like it, it kind of reminds me of like the way you would play a souls game right because in a souls game you you fight a boss until you memorize the pattern and then you can fight them yeah. you know out of the gate with a rainbow six game or like with zionic front you play a mission enough times that it's like okay, I know that the Mudrock Gundam is going to come in from that entrance in uh, Jaburo, which, hey, shout out to uh, Rogue New Type. He did have the incomplete version at the invasion of Jaburo. So it's like, I know that the Mudrock's going to come out there. So I'm going to make sure that I, you know, organize my team to, to flank him over on that side kind of thing. That's pretty neat. So it's, it's understandable to repeat playing a, a level because yeah. you're trying, you're trying to learn it. And, and then real quick, so it showed up during the invasion of Jabra? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and the Blanc rival, um, I see Rogue New Types calling that out. The Blanc rival is like their version of the white base, which it's kind of a funny looking white base because you know how the white base has those big yellow discs on the side? Mm -hmm. I believe that the Blanc rival is the one that has the discs kind of turned and up up top oh i think i've seen that okay so that's neat because i feel like you know a lot of times you see all these new gundams all the time it's like yeah where did that come from but being at jabaro makes sense like because i you would think that they would have a lot of that experimental stuff there uh, anyway yeah yeah and you think about like you know kind of you wonder how many of the stories kind of passed around Xeon pilots. It's like how many of them actually fought Amaro versus how many of them encountered something like 
the Gundam sixth or the Gundam seventh. And it's like, they thought they were fighting the Gundam, but or the white devil, right? Isn't that yeah. the name? It's yeah. And that's kind of maybe how that myth might've perpetuated a lot more. So. Exactly. So I think that that's kind of an interesting concept to think about. Like, yeah. But yeah, obviously a lot of new drops coming on P Bandai. So like, again, you know, keep your eye out for if, if there's something that you missed out on. Um, I think, let me, I, I believe I I did this before. Let's look up the Gundam Lindworm because that is a, a P Bandai. And let me show you how many times they have re-released this thing. So obviously there's nothing currently available, but no longer available. We check that. They have re-released this guy four times and wow. check this out the last re-release was actually Cheaper. knocked down twelve dollars dang good guy bandai right there you go like <laughs> you know <laughs> that's pretty good damn that but thing looks cool too i should have got it, goes it back to what you were saying where it's like you know um if they can gauge the interest of a particular kit you know maybe the first edition of it might be more expensive because they don't know how many of them they're going to sell. But with something like this, oh, that they have yeah. continually sold out on. Yeah, they can yeah, all, they probably beautiful. just keep whatever tooling they need. And they're like, Hey, now we know we can build this much and make it this cheap and still make a lot. Yeah. Cause that's the right. thing. It's like, they probably, and again, this is the math. I think people don't realize they do. It's like, okay, we know we can produce way more this time because it's going to sell. And we can make it just a little bit cheaper so we know there will be more people willing to buy it. That way we maximize profit. So there you go. Dude, so, dude. yeah, if you don't want to have to wait uh, for the <laughs> for another re-release, again, link down in the description below and uh, I'll send you one for free. Uh, so that said, these are just like some of the re-releases that have come out on P-Bandai. But uh, Zionic Shadow, uh, patron and supporter of the channel, brought to my attention these guys that are coming out on p bandai um and again these are those things that they're not going to see a a wide release right because it's so like, unique who even read g unit <laughs> yeah i've never i mean i've listened to g unit <laughs> same <laughs> Uh, so this is such a cool gun. I don't even know if I can pronounce this. The burn Lapius. Uh, that is definitely not a Gundam wing name, naming nomenclature, yeah, naming convention, yeah. whatever you would call even it. Even the design, that would not be my first thought. No, but it does have a very sick looking transformed mode that is, uh, looks like a high gog. Oh, wow. So that's unique. I, I don't know if it's, you know, I never, like I said, I, I don't know anything about uh, G unit, but I do know that this thing looks badass in its transformed that, that mode. Wow. Um, that's very unique. So I don't even know if it's an amphibious suit, but it does have like kind of the dragon fang things that uh, the Gundam Shenlong has. And it almost looks like it's trying to, I don't know if that's just red coloring or is that supposed to be like a sensor, but right under the, that yeah. is a good question. I, I think it's just red coloring. Um, I'm I, I guess what a what we would look to is see where that is on the Gundam I, form, right? Because in yeah. its transformed mode, it probably has that somewhere. Uh, it's probably tucked somewhere into the backpack. Or, yeah, on the bag, yeah, because it looks like the, that backpack. Uh, hmm. yeah. I, I like it. Honestly, this reminds me of you know, speaking of Zionic Shadow when he sent the um epion like it's one of those oh, things yeah. where i like it just because of what it is like i don't care you know that it's gundam or from a certain universe it's just badass uh, yeah really this thing is <laughs> looking pretty sweet so oh, that's cool. yeah I, I'll, I'll be interested to see um i guess it, this comes out in july yeah july 2024 i guess is when the uh, pre-orders open for it so okay. keep an eye out this summer um again you know these are things that you would never see like a, a re-release of a Gundam from an obscure, what, 2001, 2010 video game on PS2, a manga adaptation from a series of from 1995. Oh These are mobile suits that we're never going to get a mass release mass of. Yeah. So that's <laughs> another good thing about P Bandai right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the secondary market for P Bandai obviously is pretty. Mm, 
you know, hit or miss. Like, obviously, like, like you said, it's, you're going to end up paying like $80 for something that should be 30, but you know, it's funny. It is hit or miss. And sometimes the hits are pretty good. Like, especially when there was a while there, I was getting all of these advanced of Zeta kits from I was gonna say, Amazon. You picked up, yeah. You picked yeah. up a couple um, of heavily discounted AOZ kits on Amazon, right? Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because after a while people aren't buying them and they just reduce the price to a more, you know, reasonable price. But it, it if you hunt for things, you can typically find them. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely, uh, if, if you want it bad enough, there's there's a way to find it. <laughs> Except what I've learned is from Marvel Legends. Yes, because of the X-Men show and my son. <laughs> I'm now like, I was trying to look at the new Wolverine that they came out with. And it's like $80. It's it's expe- basically they don't print it anymore. And then I was doing yeah. research and they say that usually happens with Marvel Legends. They make one and they don't necessarily do reprints or re-releases. They'll just make a new version. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's. And, and my little brother is heavy into the uh, Marvel legends oh, uh, figures. And like, you know, he's got the wall of figures that he's opened that are like, okay, you know, these ones are, you know, less limited edition. Then he's got the ones that are, you know, still in boxes, like the beast that's wearing a lab coat. Like that's uh, a big, that's deal. my son's favorite. Cause I have the regular <laughs> beast and I paid 80 for it like two years, two years ago or back when I was still getting, but like, yeah, that one with the lab coat is awesome. And yeah. Oh Oh, yeah. But Hey, um, thank you, Drackmore for the congratulations. Appreciate it. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, Drackmore digital, I, I, he and I used to uh, do some videos together because he is one of the best toy photographers I've ever seen. Um, he did, he did some really cool stuff and like we did a whole Gumpla challenge way back in the day where we were converting high grade or at least one to one forty fourth scale Gundams into like a one twelve scale diorama, which is kind of a cool. Yeah. You know, be- Wait, because- do you have a video about this? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably buried somewhere on the channel. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll drop yeah. a link to it over in the discord. If you guys uh, are interested in seeing that I, I did a, a, cool. like a neon bar scene with a, with a high grade gym gym. And like you, you guys know how much I love magnets. I actually installed a magnet in the faceplate of the gym, and uh, made like a little uh, paper cigarette that had a magnet oh. in it that would stick to the face so that it looked like he was smoking. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, also coming from Pre Bandai again. Shout out to Zionic Shadow. If you're not if you're not following Zionic Shadow and Zeke New York on um, on yeah. Instagram and Twitter they're my favorite um you know news droppers when it comes to there's to, to, to new gun kits just because you know if you follow like some of the gundam twitter accounts or like just the p bandai account you're gonna get swarmed with like you know the jackets and the like yeah, right the non-gundam merchandise and it's stuff more like the general mainstream promo stuff exactly yeah. so like if you want to see just the model kits as as i do <laughs> then zionic shadow is the guy to go to and, and I second that because I do think most of the time I come across something, it's because of something Zionic Shadow shared. So, yeah, because it's, it's yeah. easy to lose this stuff in the feed yeah. of like, you know, just generic P Bandai stuff because they're coming out with stuff like every week. Um, yeah. But not all of it is Gundam. So, right. But dude, this looks sick. <laughs> this is this is pretty freaking sweet looking. Yeah. So this I, I wonder if this is going to be the box art, although I have to say, you know, as much as I love P Bandai, come on, guys, give us give us some better box art. Give us the full uh, color know. stuff. Um. <laughs> yeah, that good point because I bet they do that to reduce costs. But I think something special about being P Bandai is it could be that. Yeah, because how often is, are people going to open it? <laughs> it's in everyone's <laughs> backlog. No, but even yeah. doing like holographic <laughs> stuff would be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I I've been diving into a lot of those types of things. As you guys know, you know when it comes to my Gunpla. I'm always um, experimenting. I want to create different stuff. I, I remember when the aerial, uh, the Gundam aerial was first announced, I was disappointed that they didn't use those types of stickers for the permit score that were like, if you remember on the old Transformers toys, they had like the the, the hide your um, your faction. And it right. was like a little black square where you would rub it with your thumb. It was like a thermal reactive uh, sticker and it would reveal whether they were an Autobot or a Decepticon. 
I was like, why can't you do that with the permit score on the aerial where like yeah. maybe you just hit it with like a little bit of a UV flashlight mm -hmm. and it lights up? That would have been. You know, that reminds me, I don't know if you remember this because this was when I was super young, but there was a line of like little animal action figures that had like different elements on them. And oh, does that sound familiar? And you could heat it up or put your thumb on it and. I'll have to yeah. find that because looking back, like they remind me of little SD Gundams. I mean, they're animals, but they have like robot parts. On there them. we go. So between that and like the Nexa Knights. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was you, right you, there. Everything we're, was we're unlocking Adam's <laughs> like core mecha memories. <laughs> and it makes sense. It all makes sense. It all It's all full circle. I mean, I, I used to love those types of toy gimmicks, you know, like the, the old He-Man figures that had like sparks in them when you would like flick the back of them, which I guess it's kind of dangerous in hindsight. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? That's funny because my, you know, my son, now that he's like getting into X-Men, he was like curious about what the toys were like when I was younger. And I, I didn't realize that a lot of them had gimmicks like Cyclops's eyes would light up. Rogue had yeah. the spring punch, even, um, beast had springs in his feet and then wolverine with the claws so it's like okay yeah that was a thing and and when i was a kid i didn't see that as kitty i saw that as helping me more be a part of it like, yeah it, it's more I, immersive that way yeah, more immersive. um dirty diggler says they are battle breasts they were actually a transformer um oh, battle beasts <laughs> no it, it, it was battle beast he corrected it but i like <laughs> battle breasts personally i like battle breasts too it sounds like a fight <laughs> i'd like to get into um, <laughs> yeah there's there's yes. no loser in a in a game of battle breasts. Wow, uh, good call out on that. Um, good call out on that because those things were awesome. You guys will have to research or look them up later because they do look badass. They are like oh, animals yeah. with like mech stuff on them. So um, cool. But yeah, I mean lenticular packaging where you can like turn it and get different images. That would be cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's so many cool things, and I've I've been looking into like different types of uh, like thermal activated paints and things that we can explore with Gumpla, because I used to love that stuff. The GI Joes that had like battle damage on them, and uh, yeah, yeah, snake eyes that I could you put in hot water and it makes them invisible or something. Yeah. Oh man. So, so I feel like they could do that more with gumpla and gundams i think they they tend to do that with like the larger stuff you know but i feel like there's more in ways of the gimmicks like like for instance sometimes they a high grade will come with a pilot or real grade yeah but it's not like they make it where there's some cool action where you're replicating like going in and out you know um, you know it's funny you mentioned that because i saw someone on twitter i wish i should have i, I should have saved the, like bookmarked the link so that i could show it there was someone on Twitter that took that 3D uh, printable cockpit, the one that I showed on stream yeah. the other day, and they printed it at 1 to 1 44th scale and like hollowed out the chest of a model kit and basically had it so that you could put the cockpit in there and then put a tiny pilot in there. Holy I was like, crap, that's next level. That <laughs> is next level. Because obviously that had to have been a resin printer, right? Yeah. I can't imagine that with filament or whatever. Wow. So pretty cool stuff. I'll 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 find that again and post post that in the Discord as well. Man, this is this is a lot of show of like you know um... <laughs> unlocking ideas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, hey, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. So yeah, back to this particular kit. I didn't even know that there was a Delta Gundam Unit Two. I knew about the Delta Kai, but this thing. It's it's like a combination of like the red Zeta, and then I kind of get those Rebawu vibes from it. Maybe it's just because it's red. <laughs> yeah, and I think the head too is a little, even though it's it's Zeta like, it also veers from Zeta like. And yeah, because I had the Delta Kai actually, and they look super similar. But the yeah. colors on this, especially when it's transformed, remind me of this look that I like, where it's like. F-18s with decals on them. Like, it looks like they're serviced, like, or service-based machines. Um, yeah. and, and I noticed the, I don't know if it's, yeah, it says it on there, Air Force, which I find odd. I don't yeah, think we've ever seen Air, Force Air Force as a decal on a, a, a UC Gundam. Um, I've seen people put it on like Zeta Pluses. I've never seen it like come with a kit before, yeah. like the Karaba Air Force. It must be something maybe I'd, yeah, okay, that's a good point. Um, 
but uh, like seeing where the Anaheim Electronics logo is, I think that just like sells this, you know, as not more than a toy. You know, it's like it's yeah, uh, yeah. like like this looks like something you would expect to see from like Lockheed Martin with like the right. And, and honestly, I would love to start doing some more of that type of stuff with with my model kits where it's like not just. I'm not a big fan of like emergency warning hatch type decals like that type of stuff, but things like this that like that you would expect to see on on an yeah. aircraft. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Like because yeah, these companies are wanting to show off obviously um, to their enemies, so the enemies know where to buy their weapons. <laughs> <laughs> right, especially Anaheim because you know <laughs> yeah. they don't sell to anybody. <laughs> so yeah, this thing is this thing's pretty sweet looking. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to jump on it, but uh, I don't know. I guess it depends on the price tag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't be too much. I think I even got the Delta Chi. I want to say I got it on Amazon because it was another one where it was cheaper than it should be. And I was like, well, I'll just grab it. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that is all of the P Bandai news that I have. But like I said, I cannot um, recommend keeping an eye out on these things enough if you're interested in gunpla you know obviously that's not for everybody but you know if you're here i imagine that you're probably tangentially interested in gundam and gunpla yeah, so exactly. yeah keep an eye out on that stuff because then you can get again you know a kit that i probably would never have seen and honestly we're still missing a ton of stuff from the 0081 video game like there's no standard armor gundam seventh um i'm still oh, working on my conversion kit from the full armor one. Oh yeah which but... you know surprisingly that did get a mass market release and it's like why yeah <laughs> why that one <laughs> well, that's <laughs> interesting yeah the same with zionic front it seems mm -hmm. like with yeah double oh eighty one even more so it seems that it has a lot of yeah so you only knew of the g line because of that yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that that was where the where it was first introduced. Yeah, was that's what I've heard from you guys, and and I only knew about it because of GBO two. So if it wasn't for the games, I would not have really known or cared for these other. That's a great way to introduce mobile suits, if not a show, a game. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. when I first watched Zeta Gundam, I was not particularly interested in the gap plant but then when i played gundam versus zeta gundam and i saw like wait a second this thing has like double beam sabers and twirls around like then i fell in love with the gap plant as a design um and then even more so when i played it in gbo2 yeah yeah that's the thing about gbo2 again it's like a little it's, it's like what the metaverse needs to have when it's fully launched like a way you can just get into any suit and like kind of see what it can do and honestly, I think that that would be an interesting way for Bandai to go about gauging uh, interest in model kits that they wanted to design. Because clearly, I mean, I imagine that they have player data on like how many times a particular suit has been selected. Because oh, I would think so. Yeah. Because when you go into your Haro menu in yeah, GBO2, it, it tells you like how often you sortie in particular yeah. um, mobile suits. So yeah, that would be some cool data. I hope we can get them to release that before they ever close off the game. Um, why would you say that? <laughs> well, because I know they're going to do it and then people are going to figure out how to get it running again. <laughs> True. I'm sure that there are actually already people that like, I mean, I, I don't know if Talos Mobius is in chat, but I guarantee you that the day the servers for GBO2 go down, Talos is probably going to be like, I have this a Discord server. Join and we're yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Nice, nice impression too. But yeah, no, I can't I, do Greek. I, I do think that gbo2 has a strong enough following that when it does end people are going to continue it going because a lot of i mean a lot of people that play the game at a high level are also very technically in inclined i guess more that they tend to be into that sort of thing especially yeah if you're if you're managing to remember all the stats and skills of a mobile suit you've got the brain capacity yeah yeah i mean there's uh there's so many hidden systems and like we've talked about this before just the idea that you know there's different uh collision detection going on yeah. in gbo2 there's different um you know speed and rotation and damage management there th it is such an in-depth game that if you really are playing at a high level 
you might you might as well be a programmer at that point. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I think so. Yeah. So just looking at the uh, instruction manual from the old uh, 0081, um, speaking of, you know, video games like, you know, the uh, it, it's interesting. Interestingly enough, GBO2 is still using the same game engine as 0081. So, you know, yeah, that's like, amazing. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, the G line standard armor. This is interesting to me is you can actually build it in three formations. I didn't know this when I purchased it. I thought that you could only do the standard armor loadout or the Gatling oh, Smasher. Yeah. But it looks like you can actually do the G line light armor. That's kind of interesting. Oh, okay. So that's how they, so you, that would be the one you would then buy two of potentially. Maybe you I think so. Yeah. You probably, you probably do need, um, you know, two or three of these guys so that you can accommodate all of your various G line variants. It was interesting because when this came out, I was surprised that because, you know, a lot of times when you go on P Bandai, you'll see like they come out with um, like with some of the AOZ kits. Like, remember, they did the uh, the Barzam and the Barzam oh, came yeah. out with both the like Mars Zeon colors and the Titans colors. Right. So I was surprised that when they G when the G line came out, that they didn't have the light armor and the standard armor. Because not only did that one you were talking about have the two versions, it also had the add-on packs for it or whatever right. it was that were the two versions too. Yeah. Now, I would be very interested to see... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, how much did you pay for the, the G-Line uh, standard armor? That is a very good question. Let me... Uh, um... so that was It was p Bandai, so probably up to 30 Probably, I, I think it was probably closer to 24, but oh, let me okay. confirm that. Yeah, because usually they're 22. So I'm just looking because like, yes, FOMO, I see you showing it <laughs> off. And then I looked it up, 47 <laughs> on um, on eBay, which does not seem bad. Uh, 29 shipping. Okay, never mind. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah, they always get you with that uh, with that shipping charge. <laughs> so about 70 uh, now that I'm looking. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, when these things come up, you got to grab them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me just double check because, yeah, when at least for shipping to the United States, it's flat ten dollars shipping no matter where you are in the country. So yeah. if you're in the United States, it's like kind of a no brainer to to get it when when it's uh, available for pre order. Yeah. Let's see. But yeah, then and then I guess it depends how much you really want it because yeah, sometimes. If the difference is only about 20 or 30. Not yeah. Okay. So it was 32 was the uh, G line standard armor. Okay. Um, at the time that I, that I purchased it. So then, okay. you know, plus Good. 10 bucks shipping, it was total like 43, $44. Um, okay. So I'll keep that in mind when I hunt around. Um, yeah. Exactly. It's 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 nice to gauge like, okay, what, what kind of markup am I paying for this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But again, I, you know, I think that 32 is probably what you would expect to pay for a kit that has this many kind of configurations and like the accessories that come with it. it does look like it comes with, you know, two beam sabers, the beam rifle and the shield. Interestingly enough, it is the same shield as the one that comes with the um, full armor Gundam 7. Yeah, which is a cool shield design. So, yeah, I, I love that thing. Like it's it's got just enough of that gundam -y look to it that it's you know and for the federation i love the color separated federation emblems on things i think that really drives yeah it that goes a long way toward towards uh selling it for sure yeah so i'm curious because i'm gonna make a ton of noise ripping this out of the plastic bag so here is the runner that that shield comes on and i was curious if it is the same runner that comes with the gundam seventh because you know typically they will recycle parts like that yeah um and but it, being from the same technically line i guess because it's 0081 maybe that's what i would think but it looks like this is a fresh runner because i don't know what these parts are for these some uh, boosters probably that looks like what the um pale rider space 
Titan. So that might actually still be for the uh, for the full armor Gundam because I don't think that this has those boosters on no, it at all. I'm actually seeing where it shows like that it has like the cannons or yeah on the like which is odd. Yeah, like is that fuel for maybe the thrust because it's doing so much on ground? Maybe possibly could be could be just stabilizer fins for when the cannons are firing. Um, oh, so it might not even have anything to do with propellant or thrust. It might just be stabilizers. That's what I'm thinking. You know, kind of like how like the Hyakushiki and the Rictius have those big like wing binders on them. It's like they don't do anything in particular besides just add that added balance. Yeah, balance. that. OK, good call, because that makes sense for the space type Pale Rider having that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we've got our clear beam effect parts, tiny sticker sheet and not a ton of color correction involved. Hmm. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, well, let me see if I can hold the beam beam effect parts. So, so not many stickers. Yeah. And Fantastic. I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah. Now, I do find it funny that on the package, they have this uh, cute disclaimer. Let me see if I can read it out for you here. This package contains one set of high grade G line standard armor only. I don't know why you would expect that it comes with more than one, but I know. And when have they ever done that? <laughs> the images are for illustrative purposes only. And the completed product in the image has been painted. Well, yeah, how can you tell it's been painted? <laughs> oh, one thing though, that oh, I don't, God. I don't know if we would have time to do it today, but I do this sometimes when I'm building a kit, I look real close to like, it would be hard to do it. Yeah. I remember I was having to look it up online because, Oh, P Bandai Pale Riders didn't have it, but <clears throat> seeing the colors because sometimes there might be an area where oh wait the feet have an extra blue that is not on the kit or part of stickers but it's part of the official images. So yeah. sometimes I'll go and make adjustments. I know the Pale Riders had a lot of that. It's interesting you mentioned that. Like I think um, I noticed that with the Gundam base, the Hobby Hyzak, because oh. like the Hobby Hyzak, the the breast vents they in the photos are all gold on the outside and then have like red fins on the inside. But if I remember correctly, I didn't see any red stickers that came with it. They're just gold parts. Interesting. So, that, yeah. I red inside vents and thrusters. I think it was a common thing. I want to say even the O, I think the O had like a green that would be painted yes. in. And I haven't finished that yet. Um, yeah. The O is, is kind of, you know, it's it's it is a dated kit, but I I do think it holds up pretty well considering that. Um, but yeah, as far yeah. as like the color separation, that's probably the one thing that it needs to be um, improved about it. Yeah, otherwise it, the proportions of it, like the size of it, I didn't think I don't think they skimped on anything to keep it small. No, for yeah. sure. Um, interestingly enough, so this is um, well, I guess it's not technically the same beam rifle. I've got the beam rifle for the Gundam 7th here. Uh, the oh. G-Line beam, beam rifle is huge. I thought it was the same rifle, but... Oh, interesting. Kind of... Uh, let's see if I can show it off here. So I guess that's the silhouette of that beam rifle. And you can see it's like almost a full half inch longer than the Gundam 7th. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture online of the built... And it's yeah, it looks a lot different actually. Pretty huge. It's much bigger. Pretty cool though. But yeah, much bigger. Huh. Uh oh, we got an issue in the Twitch chat. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh oh, you know those bots? They got to get into the Midnight Hatter live stream. <laughs> That's how you know that I've really made it. <laughs> exactly. Four, hey, you hit four thousand. All the the AI bots are celebrating. Yeah, there you go. So interesting. This I think this is going to be a fun build um, overall. Yeah, just by looking at because I'm looking at pictures of it because I want to buy it, but I'm I'm seeing <laughs> like its base form looks great, and I love that you just add on the parts to it. The color separation is fantastic. And um, so now I'm wondering if that's that should be my next resin conversion project is because the light armor has those red parts. Um, I don't think. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Um, yeah, like the red on the the cockpit and on the crotch. Yeah. 
Let's see. G line light armor. Let's see if we can pull this back up here. I need to reinitiate my screen share. Oh. Oh, wow. Someone's already selling the feet by themselves for like 60 bucks. <laughs> Why? <Feet picks>. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is that, uh, that G-Line light armor. And it's got, you know, the red oh, shoulder. Oh, I see. Wow. Yeah, so that is pretty neat. So if you took the base form that you can build from this guy and just add on some of those uh the shoulder panels and I guess the leg armor you could have a pretty pretty sweet looking light armor. And does that go on top of the blue or would you replace the blue armor with the red? It looks like you would replace the blue armor with the red. So you think you'd probably like measure the blue pieces, put it in blender or whatever, and then do your whole magic thing. <laughs> I think that would be the way to go. That's, a, See, that's pretty cool. And this is where it's like, I got to agree with rogue new type. The light armor is probably, probably my favorite um, in, in the video game. I don't think that you can actually use the standard armor without the Gath Gatling smashers. If I remember correctly. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, here's that. This is like the naked G line, I guess. Is huh. um, bu -bu 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 oh yeah, and then we've got the assault armor. Yeah, I think so, I yeah, just got that. more confused, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I never stop being confused when it comes to <laughs> when yeah, they have variants. You know. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> all yeah, the these variants. types of variants. Yeah. Um, the assault armor, I think, is probably like the rarest looking one. It kind of looks like a GM Spartan, to be honest with you. Yeah, the um, armor type, the green. Yeah. Or like a GM striker or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, which is funny because to me, this looks more like a standard armor than the standard armor, which kind of looks like a heavy armor. <laughs> yeah, I would I would agree with that. Hmm. Uh but like like I said, overall, I'm just happy that this particular kit comes with so many formations and like option parts that you, you know, if you want to use them, you can. If not, then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's always nice, especially if you're like wanting to take shots, you know, pictures to have different and then set it up a certain way. You know, that is a, a thing because I've realized as an adult, like it's like I miss when I could play with my toys and enjoy it. It's just nowadays. <laughs> You know, it's like uh, <laughs> yeah, there's judge so, much, so much we're expecting out of our imagination. But having the gimmicks and option parts are kind of a way to do that. Where you're just kind of setting it up, set it there, and that's adult playing. You know? Yeah, that's a that's a good way of putting it. Adult playing. That's yeah. That's what I call <laughs> this. This is adult play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that could be taken the wrong way for sure. <laughs> Especially if we're talking about toys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what's what's fascinating is you look at the original design of the of the g-line standard armor here like talk about a glow up <laughs> like this this thing looks ridiculous it kind of reminds me of like vifam oh yeah yeah the yeah. uh the updated version definitely looks more gun to me than than this does this is just like kind of a cobbled mess yeah, I I, I kind of love that stuff though when it's like the those and I'm sure the artwork was done by Kunio Okawara if I'm saying his name right because that kind of gives that vibe. But I like that where he kind of sets yeah. the stage of these are the mechanics and then you have more of a I guess an anime designer than give it that treatment for show game or whatever. You know? Exactly. Yeah, it's like like, like they brought him back for seed. Remember to like just sh do like an updated for seed and then they took that and translated it to the movie. Yeah, that, that's pretty neat. So, yeah. so then that's interesting because, you know, for me, I always thought that this was a original design for 0081. I did not realize that this was dates back all the way to like, what, 1990? Wow. Okay. The, the MSV version. Okay, so a couple things. One, that's even cooler that they're, they were sourcing older stuff that no one was talking about that was done by some OGs. You know, um, and yeah. then two, the, just to get in that representation. And then... 
a, a, a gumplet kit. So anything's possible. Yeah, this stuff is always fascinating. I know, I know you love like you know the development trees and yep. like where some of these things come from. So it's very cool to see that that they existed long before, you know. Yeah, it's not like one of those things where like, oh, they just keep coming up with new stuff. <laughs> it's right. Like, it's well, not it's so much a retcon stuff. as like a. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with uh, the noisy fairy. Like one of the main girl, I forget her name, ha had some stuff written in the 80s about her. So it's almost like they take something and then they expand on it. Um, and that's how you know that it was created by a real fan. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this looks sick, by the way. Yeah, so this is the light armor from the MSV. Uh, wow. So that that took a huge turn. I mean, yeah. that, is, that is a huge difference between that and what we got in 0081, which I still think that that is... Great that's design. Awesome. <laughs> this, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah... It, I, like I said, I can't wait to dive into this kit and give it the full treatment. Um, Ultronomous was asking me before, you know, do I see myself customizing it? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I, don't I think, think it's, this is one that um, it's sick how it is. Well, yeah, and this, I guess because it's kind of a rare thing to see a lot. True. Yeah. Maybe so, once it's I mean, out more. Yeah. The uh, the thing, the only thing I might do is I might print out those resin parts to make a light armor light conversion armor. and then at least it's one more version that i can snap parts on and be like hey look this is how many configurations of the rx81 can we can well, we the accommodate next, we need to do a kunio okawara conversion where you make those big chonkier <laughs> pieces that would be sick but that would be hard yeah, that would yeah. Be. but I mean, that, that that would be a lot of fun to kind of re-envision some of those things, because yeah. I know that none of that stuff, and, and you've talked about this before in the past when it comes to Gunpla, where even like the differences between what you see in the anime, what you get in a, in a high grade, and then what you get from a robot spirit, it's like you're going to get three different designers' interpretations of the same thing. And I saw this recently with, I realized this recently with the Sentinels from X-Men. It seems like oh, every yeah. time they show up as a toy or in this or that, there's always differences. Even though there's some main things, there's always a difference. And that's interesting. Yeah. It, when I was, um, I, I still have all of my old hero clicks, but when I was really big into hero clicks, I had both of the generations of the Sentinel figure because, I mean, you have to. Like that thing yeah. is freaking sweet. Um, and, even those they were from the same sculpt like those miniatures but there were so many like small differences whether it was in the paint job or like maybe there was like a minor difference to the mold that they made ah, okay yeah i just looked that up those are pretty cool and i i've heard you mention this before but hero clicks is pretty much just like a strategy game right or like tactical game to play with people yeah yeah um i know a lot of people are not a big fan of like the click series and i think justifiably so for when they started adapting things like halo clicks or horror clicks i think they oh. did mech clicks with like mech warrior stuff That's i don't right. think that that was probably the best course of action for them was to like branch out and get all these ips but when they were just doing dc and marvel comic book hero clicks like those things were pretty sweet yeah i never Never got into that. I guess I didn't really know about it, I guess, or didn't pay attention. But um, I, I, I kind of like that stuff because it, it almost looks like you don't ne necessarily need to get them for playing. You could get them for collecting and because they have some pretty cool looking ones. Yeah. Looking when they they started kind of really pushing the um, pushing the envelope when it comes to their sculpts, um, especially when they came out with some of those larger figures. Um, the anti monitor from from DC Comics, like they they actually came with a battery pack and had like light up eyes and stuff like that. Oh, wow. um, they had like the there was actually several versions of the Phoenix. So it's like you had regular Jean Grey Phoenix, which was like big fiery bird with like a little green outfit Jean Grey, and then you had like the Dark Phoenix, which oh. same big fiery bird but painted in red and had like some different stats and things associated with it. Um, oh. They did some really cool stuff with that. And I, I actually have some pretty uh, limited edition um, hero clicks like Kingdom Come Superman, which was like a special variant of like a Superman figure, uh, Superboy Prime, which 
there was like uh, I I could probably go into all the crazy details about the licensing issues around Superman slash Superboy Prime, but oh wow, yeah, I had no idea that that would be even a thing. Yeah. Um, but no, looking at these, uh, yeah, I'm shocked how cool this stuff actually is. Um, yeah, some of the later generation Hero Clicks uh, miniatures had some pretty sweet sculpts, and even like in the fan community, they there was like a lot of uh, encouraging, um, you know, just fan sculpts and stuff like. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, because I guess you could just replace the base. Yeah. Right. Like if someone wanted to have their own thing, but use it in, in the game, that's actually pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Um, I think uh, I actually came second in, in a tournament that I played in. Uh, everyone kind of um, looked down on me because there was like a eight or nine year old kid that was playing against me that had just beaten a couple of people and like they weren't sure if like they were letting him win because he was a little kid and i was like yeah i'm not gonna let him win i'm just gonna (laughs) (laughs) that's funny but that's i mean hey he's gonna learn you know these kids aren't gonna learn if you always let them win no he actually was really good i i i i I almost uh i almost lost to him because of i think he had like um like android andy or something like that one of these random figures that was just like absurdly good for no reason but uh man that reminds me back when halo 2 came out my uh, bowling uh alley near me uh had a halo 2 tournament and so i had to get me another friend we had to get four people so it was me two of my friends and my little brother nice at the time he was probably 12 11 and we were going and thinking dude we are gonna murder we went in we got murdered (laughs) and and it was so bad that we were out of the first round but then uh, i guess another team needed someone and they had saw how my brother played my little brother and so they asked him to join so he got to continue to play you know they didn't go to you (laughs) yeah i I thought that was so interesting because it was like this whole time i thought i was a badass halo player but i was just playing with my friends yeah but then like and then seeing like my younger brother it's cool sometimes you see how kids can sometimes just really take off with something i'm telling you man it's that fast twitch muscle fiber i know when my when my family used to go to the beach every summer um my nephew who was like 10 years old at the time we would have uh fifa tournaments so like everyone would pick a team and we'd like you know play fifa and just like soccer games and stuff like that and you know we're talking about a bunch of guys in their 30s (laughs) and then this 10 year old kid who is literally just grabbing the ball as Cristiano Ronaldo and juking all of us and like scoring seven to eight goals a game. And we're getting pissed. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like, you know what? It's just because he's young. It has nothing to do with the fact that we've had like seven or eight drinks before we started oh. playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. That's funny. Yeah. That's, but that's neat. That's like another example of something that multiple ages can really get into together, you know? sports hero clicks video games you know it's uh yeah and and there's the it's one of those games that i love when board games and tabletop games kind of introduce their own version of difficulties right like there were certain ways you could play hero clicks that were less complicated if you wanted to play with like a younger crowd that didn't want to like explore all the different rules um or you could go you know balls to the wall and like play with all of the the conditional formatting rules and things like that oh, wow. tournament <laughs> tournament I, builds and things like that. So I'm looking on eBay and there is a Cyclops hero clicks for one forty nine. There's rogue for a dollar <laughs> that, I mean, that is pretty cool. And they remind me, I used to have these little die cast metal X-Men. Oh, I Does remember those. Cool? Yeah. yeah. And that's, they reminded Wolverine. me of that. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. See, another one of those gimmicks that, like, you know, we had as kids that the, today's kids don't have is like the die cast toys. Yeah. yeah oh that's man. Pretty neat stuff. Well, I think that that about does it for today's show. I had a lot of fun talking P Bandai stuff. And like I said, yeah. you know, I don't want to just bore you guys with all this crinkling of plastic. <laughs> but that said, if you have not, this guy. Oh, yeah. We're doing the drawing next week at noon Eastern. So I will announce the winner then, like on next week's show. Oh, okay. So, you so have beginning of next week. week. Yeah. Okay. A full cool. week to, uh, to, to get your name on the list. Link down in the description below or in the chat. 
um thank you guys so much for uh getting us up to four thousand onward and upward to five thousand yeah. we'll yeah, see what fact, i give away then you know maybe well, maybe it'll be like a dendrobium or something <laughs> oh my god no, no I, I, oh go ahead i was gonna say make sure if i don't bring this up tomorrow bring it up so we can get people to you know get to the link um and those in the chat that's going to be on the show tomorrow if i don't bring it up or we don't make sure to bring it up yeah. i don't want to forget that yeah harass us for sure yeah um because yeah no, no entry requirements just you know pop your name in the list and and we'll do a random drawing i i've learned that like you know whenever you try to do these kind of giveaways and like it's like oh comment something down below you know I, trying to track down people that after they've won i'm like well <laughs> yeah i would say 50 50 usually it's and then just do another giveaway later exactly um, so but i want to make sure that someone gets this and gets these uh these uh, decals that i'm going to be printing off for you that's the cool part yeah, I, I mean, that's well, one of the things I like to do with giveaways is make them meaningful. So give yeah, away, well, you know, a P Bandai kit and something that's, you know, limited edition. You're not going to be able to get somewhere else. Um, so yeah. some some pre-cut uh, printed decals that I'm going to design here. Yeah, hope you guys are excited about it. Thank you again for uh, for tuning in. And don't forget Gundam Explained show tomorrow. Yeah. Do you have any uh, spoilers about what we might be talking about? There is something, but I forgot what it was. I have it somewhere, like in an email. <laughs> that, okay, yeah. that that that's uh, it's an interesting <laughs> no, omen. Sometimes I'll come up across something, be like, I need to save this for later. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have like my um my burner Discord account that I'll message things to myself. Like, <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty good actually. That's pretty good oh man well thank you guys so much thank you adam for uh hanging out and talking gundam kits with me hope you guys have a good rest of your day we will catch you tomorrow yep see y'all